Hello and welcome to another part of Thrawn's Revenge. Last time we took down pretty much all of the Duskan League but for one Executor Star Destroyer and we faced a major space battle against the Red Guys, the Greater Malrood I think they're called, where we destroyed loads of their ships, they destroyed some of ours, overall it was a good engagement. Now I've put together a special army for an experiment. This army is just a load of Phalanx Commandos and they can float about in space without triggering battles just like our hero guy. So I thought let's invade the last Pentastar planet. Turned out there's actually a massive army defending it. I had no intel on the place, just thought I'd show up. And an unfortunate setup from the map means that we have to advance out of a choke point from our landing zone. We advance right into the enemy army. So we're immediately fighting with only two build pads secured. Maybe that will be enough though. The anti-vehicle turret starts taking out the enemy's tanks but they've got a Sith Lord of some kind on their side and he immediately kills most of the commandos I deployed. I sent them to hang out near the anti-infantry turret while the Sith guy is trying to use the force to take out the vehicle turret. He eventually comes over towards the anti-infantry turret and when I switch target onto the Sith he immediately loses loads of health so that's the way to kill him but I was unexpectedly defeated. For whatever reason I thought that as long as you still held the capture point you weren't defeated but actually it's just if you lose your units. So that meant I should have been putting down reinforcements as the men died, not just waiting until they were all dead for whatever reason. So we did fail, but it feels like we're getting somewhere with this plan. So I thought let's try it again, but with loads of commandos, and this time I'll spam them a bit more and keep our pop cap filled. While the new army is in production, we lose some of our precious mist to the red guys. I've got all these fleets hanging around though, so I can quickly send a response force to take our precious mist back. They did have a couple of decent ships, there's an Allegiance Battlecruiser and a Secutor, and the usual focus fire wasn't quite enough here to avoid losses, mainly because the enemy were very annoyingly targeting our weaker ships, so they blew up one of our corvettes. They almost took out a carrier and then they did take out another carrier towards the end, we just can't strip the guns off these Allegiance things fast enough to kill them even with the whole fleet firing at them all at once, like you can with Imperial Star Destroyers. Anyway, we did win the battle with those losses, and the mists are back. In this strategic situation I really should push on and take the planets just to the right here, because we can make a one planet choke point, however I can't be bothered and that's my general opinion about all of our battlefronts, we could be invading the red guys from all directions but we're just not, I'm just kind of playing around here as we wind the series down and seeing if anything happens when you let time pass in the game since there does appear to be a number of scripted events. So now we go back to the Pentastar Assault, however we lose instantly. <laughs> The enemy Sith Lord used a lightning attack that he apparently has and it killed all of my guys in one hit. So the battle was just over just as it started and I was like no 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 no, back in and re-attacked with my big stack of commandos in space. This time I spread all the guys out so they couldn't be zapped all at once. A couple of units come over to fight our anti-vehicle turret. And we've seen before those speeders are quite good at damaging turrets and we've lost half of its health just after that little engagement, which means when a whole load more vehicles show up to fight it, we can't fend them off with just the one anti-vehicle turret, plus here's the Sith Lord. What I need to do now is have a few guys hide in the corner while others draw him towards the anti-infantry turret. Things are going to plan at first, but all those vehicles quickly destroyed the anti-infantry turret and now it's just over. We can't possibly hope to rebuild them and we can't hope to destroy the vehicles, so I'm going to have to let them have the win once again. There we go, that's three defeats in quick succession, probably the only time we'll see that in this campaign. It's just not working, my precious exploit plan has been foiled by the enemy just killing the units. How outrageous. So I thought maybe we'll come back to that later, but I still wanted to try something with my exploit commando stack, so I thought let's go over here and perhaps try this tactic against a softer target, because surely it does actually work. This time we weren't facing any vehicles or any heroes, so that's a good start. Against regular infantry our commandos can do okay because that's the thing they're good against, they have a long range sniper rifle type attack that just takes out infantry, as you can see right here as the enemy attempt to attack us and we start gunning them down. So now we can gradually grind our way forwards with our little block of commandos just killing block after block of enemy infantry, making it all the way to the next capture point. 
we set up an anti-infantry turret between us and the enemy base, take the capture point, and now focus on the back to tank and bunker to the top left there. The bunker has some enemy infantry in it who we need to kill. Here's another thing we can try to get rid of them. I can throw grenades. They have thermal detonators that can only be thrown at close range, so I do have to run up to the bunker and get shot to pieces by it. But once they're thrown, the entire thing is killed, along with all the infantry squads inside. Now we can kill the stragglers and that back to tank at our leisure and pull down more reinforcements to enhance our blob. Now our blob just continues on towards the enemy base. There is a barracks which could be dangerous to attack because it does have a built-in anti-infantry turret. However, we outrange it with our sniper rifles so we can very, very slowly kill it by shooting at it. Plus, in this case, I could build an anti-vehicle turret next to the barracks and have that shoot at it. It was a bit of a race. Thought maybe we can snipe the building down before the turret starts firing, but no. Not that it matters, so there we go, that's the main threat gone. They had a tax collection building as well, which we could just throw a load of grenades at. Then we gunned down a few more infantry here and there, and the battle was over. We lost no full units, the enemy lost a load of stuff, and because they had nothing in space, they lose the space as well. We can immediately take claim to it and put a space station there ourselves. Incredibly cheeky. So the plan does work, you can just spam these super cheap available from the start of the game units and pull these exploits at any time. <laughs> Could have made the campaign much easier I suppose had I been doing it. As I smugly sat there, the enemy actually did try to get some payback. They sent a fleet to retake the space, and it seems the not participating in space battles thing only counts when you're on the offensive with the commandos, so their fleet can attack my transports if they're just sitting here. Well, they can't actually attack them because we can just do that. We just hyperspace away the second the battle starts. As long as they don't bring an interdictor, we're free to do that. There's an incredibly laggy explosion as the enemy retake the space, but fine, they can have it. We weren't using it anywhere. We've still got the planet, we can build things on it, we can even very cheekily build an army on it while we're not there in order to make this exploit super powerful. Go take a place, build loads of mega maser tanks on it before the enemy can react. That place is as good as yours forever. I thought let's try the exploit some more, so I went to attack another of the Zinja's Empire planets, these tan brown guys. They had a load of this elite infantry blocking our path as we arrived to the map. But as I said, our guys are infantry killers, so we hack our way through those enemies, taking a couple of losses, but that's fine. These guys are the same price as our generic infantry unit, so losing them isn't a big deal at all. I run all the way to the enemy base without much more opposition and set up a turret inside. Some infantry come from the top left of the map to a tank, going after my back to tank there. One squad comes over and decides to set itself on fire by going after our anti-infantry turret. I in theory can shoot the other squad right now, but the old line of sight things coming in so we need to get up to point blank range. And there we go, that's their infantry cleared out. As for their base, I set up a turret to blow up their tax building, threw a whole load of grenades at the shield generator until finally it went down. And then the enemy were out of buildings, usually this would be where the battle ends, but I think because the enemy have a couple of those elite infantry units about, and I barely have anything on the map, the AI still doesn't consider itself to have lost, it wants to fight this to the end. So we went and sniped one of the bunkers that had loads of the infantry in it, the bunker eventually explodes and an infantry battle starts. It looked a little bit hairy there, so I decided to run for it and take the battle next to my anti-infantry turret and my healing point. The enemy were happy to oblige and got absolutely annihilated. There was one more bunker with infantry in it, but this time they thought no, so thanks to the enemy for speeding that up. We lost one unit and the enemy lost a planet. That's a pretty good exchange and it's even pretty fast to do it as well. It's barely any slower than just spamming Mega Maser tanks and it's much, much cheaper. We know we need to not hang around in case another enemy fleet appears, so let's keep moving, and we might as well keep moving on to do this exploit again somewhere else. We're going to Wayland next. More bunkers with infantry in them here to deal with. They go down just as easily as before. But the enemy also had actual tanks here, so we do need to be a bit more careful. The map was generous with build pads, and that's ideal for our exploit attempts. The enemy vehicles weren't too powerful, they didn't have the ability to kill us very quickly, and that gave us the chance to do things like this. When they drive up to us, you can throw the grenades at them, and the grenades stick to things if they hit an enemy unit. So while it would be hard to target the enemy normally because they're moving around, once you've hit them with a few, those tanks are doomed and they go down. 
so we are able to combat light vehicles with this build. As long as the enemy doesn't have anything that can run us over or anything that's just good against infantry and can kill us all, we're fine. The turrets we placed around the map are also wiping out enemy tanks left, right and centre, leaving us free to sneak into the enemy base. I found that if you go behind these barracks, they can't use their anti-infantry turret on you. So we sneak up, throw a load of grenades over the wall, and bang, the whole complex goes down. We can do the same thing to the vehicle factory they had nearby, and we win with no losses. Very nice, that's another planet under our belt. I'm going to build a full base here, I'm going to make all of the army construction things and a hypervelocity gun so we can just secure this planet and hold it completely. The weakness of this tactic is probably on the planets where they have lots of buildings, since they'll be able to spam so much stuff, you might not be able to make your exploitative break out of the initial starting position like in the Pentastar assaults we saw. So I went for another one that looked relatively easy, Findar, choosing this one in particular because it's had a gigantic crossroads in the galaxy so controlling this place is very important strategically. The enemy had a few infantry who rushed us at the start, but they just ignored my men and got shot to pieces. I moved to the northwest to take the capture point, but there was an anti-vehicle turret there and a bunker with some infantry. The anti-vehicle turret was kited on to attacking my commandos, which doesn't do very much damage, allowing me to build another turret right next to it and then take it out with the flames there. Then we spam a load more commandos since we took the capture point and shoot the hell out of the bunker. It explodes and the infantry inside are shot as well. They're trying to put another anti-vehicle turret down. These guys really think I'm about to go heavy on the vehicles at any moment. They haven't seen my army composition. I guess this means either the AI isn't particularly good or at least it doesn't cheat. He doesn't know what you have and reacts to it, even if it isn't supposed to know. They had a few vehicles of their own, who I lured out of their base and down to a vehicle turret to kill them. Took some damage doing it, but we can take our time and just go right back to a back to tank, get all of our men to full health before we go on to attack the enemy base. More enemies are wandering around the map being shot. That's all good, a nice automated system. We go up towards the enemy base and sneak in. They did have an anti-infantry turret on the choke point to get into their base, but somehow we just ran past it without really taking that much damage, so I guess it wasn't anti-infantry enough. And now we just go about our business. Got some more thermal detonators ready for this barracks. It is actually shooting at us now, but not doing that much damage. Again, it seems anti-infantry turrets don't do too much to our commandos, and that's great news, of course. Down goes the barracks. They've still got a pod walker or two wandering around, and these were a bit annoying to kill because when I tried to set up anti-vehicle turrets they just quickly walked over and destroyed them before they finished building. So we're doing this the slow way, <laughs> make a back to tank so our men can't die since they're always regening health, and gradually shoot everything in the base. Once all of the military units are down we can throw grenades to finish off the buildings, and that's this nice crossroads planet taken, doesn't that look nice? I try to build a space station here several times but I can't because the enemy are constantly moving ships above this place and they destroy my station before it finishes building, but we can hold the ground at least. I wanted to go for one more exploit attack because <laughs> it's getting boring at this point but at least it's more fun than a normal attack because it requires tactics and thought and the like, so I'm going to go for this one at the end of a, of a row of planets where it's a nice little choke point and we can just sit in the corner having our fun base being annoying. Just before I made the attack though, a space battle begins. It looks like Zinj's empire are going to try and kick us out and their fleet's actually bigger than ours here. We've got something on our hands. The good news is that since I had presumed this planet would be attacked ever since I took it, it's got a hypervelocity gun. I used that to immediately damage this Allegiance battlecruiser hanging around at the back. My ships are all trying to go towards the top left to get our fleet more in amongst our space stations. We've got two defensive platforms, the one with the four big mega mazes and this goliath thing you see at the top of the screen. It's just a big thing covered in guns, I'm not sure why it's such a weird shape, but it will act as a couple of extra capital ships in our line. As you can see, a space battle breaks out and the advantage is going to be ours because of our space stations mostly. I need to micro the mega mazer thing, but when I do, that quickly takes out the enemy's lesser ships like the cruisers, and for the bigger ones, being spammed by our gigantic space station can quickly strip the shields off things like their victory class star destroyers, and even their allegiances don't last too long against them. There's one there that tried to fight my space station and lost and is gradually being killed, while the rest of my fleets 
kind of dispersed around the place. I wasn't being very aggressive. I kept sending ships back to draw the enemy in to attack my space stations instead of my ships. And overall, things just went surprisingly well. One of the reasons things were going so well is that they've got loads of their ships sitting in the corner. We saw that happen when we were attacked at Thanos by a big fleet as well. I think there's just something fundamentally wrong with the AI. When they have ships that they can't include in their first wave because they're above the pop cap, they sometimes warp them in into the corner and just don't use them. So several key capital ships in the enemy's fleet are going to waste, while the ones who are in the battle are being wasted because they're just being overwhelmed. Our hypervelocity gun charged, and I wanted to test a theory that I hinted at previously, and that is whether the hypervelocity gun is like a physical thing that actually impacts things in the battle scene. And the answer is yes, it does. I targeted the Victory class, but it hit the Allegiance because the Allegiance was between the Victory class and where the gun fires from. Whether it can inflict friendly fire damage, which is what I was really worried about, is yet to be decided. Eventually those ships did come over to fight us, and they nearly took out one of my carriers there, and also nearly took out one of my interdictors. They were trying to blow up the interdictor because I had the gravity well on. The enemy want to retreat, so they're doing the good AI thing of trying to take out the interdictor first so they can then get out of there. Since the gravity well was disabled, or I might have turned it off, I can't remember, they did have the chance to run away. However, they were just seconds too late. We killed them all before they could get their hyperspace engines going or what have you, and we win. So this is a gigantic victory. We only lost one of those rectangular carriers somewhere in the mess. The enemy lost a gigantic fleet. Absolutely outrageous defense. Star Wars Emperor at War is all about defenses being really easy, but that was surprisingly easy since they're supposed to be harder in this mod. Anyway, now let's go and do one last commando attack over here in this corner. This battle was easier than the previous exploit attempts because the civilians were hostile to the enemy. So I think the enemy focused a lot on killing the civilians and we didn't really see very much of the actual enemy units. We finally encountered them on the way into the enemy base. There's a few guys, a tank that just drives off somewhere, so that's handy, and some infantry who just get shot. There's a barracks at the start of the base with its anti-infantry turret, potentially dangerous, but this time, just like, you know what, it's not even that powerful. We'll just get a few guys shot so we can run up and throw the grenades, and it just seems to be fine. Maybe it's just the take cover stance giving us such a massive buff that doesn't seem to do anything to us, that turret. Anyway, we grenade the rest of their buildings, and we win for no losses. Now, as I said, we're going to make it all base here. We're going to make all of the unit creation buildings so we can put down a few mega mazes and some support units. And we'll just sit here. We'll see if the enemy try to kick us out of our nice little backstop position. There was now a chance for some actual gameplay because I realized if we take that Bandomir place, it'll make our front line look a bit nicer. On the way, the fleet I had in the area faces a land army that was hovering over Wayland there. I'm guessing they wanted to take it, but they arrived to see I'd put some buildings down and realised they couldn't do it with just a few units. Maybe the plan worked. Now to Bandemir. There is a small fleet here. Nothing too bad, but they did have another one of those Allegiance battle cruiser things, which are always difficult to take down. I'm focusing on it first because I want to take out its gun emplacements since they're so powerful. But while I was doing that, it did take out a couple of my corvettes. Right now, I'm trying to get all of the smaller frigate and corvette class things just away so that they won't get killed. One of them on the left there, I think that's a frigate, was trapped in the enemy's tractor beam, but managed to escape in the end. Now we can slowly kill the hard points and get rid of this guy, while just ignoring the ISD and the Secutor because they're relatively not very powerful. Once the Allegiance is dead, we destroy those guys and overall everything was fine, none of our capital ships came under much risk. The battle didn't end when I blew up that last Star Destroyer because there was this one tiny thing hiding in the ruins, but we got him as well. Now we can go down and take the planet itself, and this time we're using actual ground units, and I guess you already know what that looks like. I've got some mega mazers and some regular tanks driving about, just shooting things. Can I attack, move them down towards this position? Even though that position has anti-vehicle turrets, a mega mazer outranges an anti-vehicle turret, so it will kill it on attack move, and it shouldn't get killed. The regular tanks might, but it doesn't matter. We can also now enjoy what we haven't been using during the exploit battles, the orbital bombardment thing, to take out some turrets and a bunker there. 
night tanks are having some trouble with this map. It's very vertical. There are lots of little passages and platforms all over the place, but we eventually navigate our way to a win without losses as usual. Now, as we draw this episode to a close, I should say that I've played about an hour and a half in the future from here, and nothing in particular happens. I take a few more planets, we've got a few more space battles and some defences coming up, but they're nothing remarkable. I was waiting for maybe something scripted to happen, maybe an invasion or something that kept being hinted at. I might play a bit more to see if it does happen, but if it doesn't, I'll probably just put one more video together from the highlights of the various bits and bobs that did happen, because there were some interesting moments and weird occurrences in the battles that take place after this, but nothing of any importance to the overall progress of the game actually happens. I could capture the whole map from this point if I wanted to, but I don't. One last thing I will mention in this episode is that I decided to send our commandos on yet another attack because I realised that this place here was the capital of the Greater Maldrood, the Red Guys, and I could just go up to their capital building and spam it with grenades. We're just really trolling them now and not even trying, just killing all of their leadership with a few grenades through the window and walking off. No punishment whatsoever from the enemy's defences. They've got some units about the place but they're not achieving very much. And of course we do go on to capture the planet itself, so we can now occupy their capital and have it just sit there continuously mocking them. And once we get a few mega mazes set up here, they'll have no way of taking it back, or at least they probably will. The enemy will actually be testing that theory that taking place and building a few mega mazes can hold it permanently in the next part, which may indeed be the last part. As I said, we'll see what happens.